Let's go. One sec, one sec, one sec. Yeah. Energy. <laughs> 
Guys, hello guys, girls, uh, aliens, motherfuckers, welcome back, welcome back in this new episode of Space Cafe. Um, sorry for my disappear, but um, you know, I start to do less live in this period because it's so fucking hot and also staying in the studio is really fucking crazy. So I decided for this period to doing only podcast. So today we are here with the one of the fucking god of Cytrans, another one of fucking god of Cytrans, Mr. Sam Parandroid. Hey, Welcome, bro. my brother. Hey, How man. are you, bro? Good, good. It's nice to see you another time on these channels and doing digital fucking shit together, bro. Yes, How are bro, you? For sure. I'm good. I just returned from Asia a couple of weeks ago and still yeah. climatizing to Europe <laughs> which is how much yeah, how much was was there um what the the heat there or what no no how many um how many months you were uh, there seven months in, in I Asia? have been there seven months yeah but I can understand that it's pretty you had to <laughs> coming yeah. back to the uh, like a Europe yeah kind of life <laughs> for sure absolutely yeah It was like, I'm, I'm still acclim acclimatizing and getting used to Europe again. But it's nice to be back in the studio for sure. That is a good thing. This is the only thing that I really missed is actually my place, my studio. Yeah, absolutely. It's every time good to come back to, to oh, home. Yeah, for Time. sure. Yeah. Um, so, we can start to... Uh, oh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people know about your story, about your artist uh, yeah. careers and stuff. But you, we want to start to maybe well, speak about where you come from. Yes, for about sure. So, like when I, about... yeah, I can give you a little introduction. So, I'm, I'm from Germany. I'm doing psychedelic music since 2008. I started to write music or had my first contact with music in the time when I was actually studying art or before I was studying art and I was on a project called International Munich Art Lab and I finished my assignment uh, which was to get on an art university and then I had still time and this project they were giving a lot of stuff to the people that were in the project like whatever you need as an artist they were giving and I had the dream to write music since I was like 16 because I was religiously listening to Psytrance. And then like the head mentor, the chief instructor there was becoming a really good friend and he arranged that I get like basically like a dual screen setup with sound card, with monitors, with everything. At that time, you yes. need to imagine, I didn't even have a PC yet. So in my family, we didn't have a really good PC until very long. And I had my first PC just around that time, shortly after I started to write music my mother bought yeah. uh, my first laptop for me but uh, before that I didn't have even access to a computer but in this time long 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 time ago I started to write music and very poorly in the beginning of course because I didn't have any knowledge I literally yeah. started from zero since I was more focused on visual art that was the thing that I was trained for you know like since I a uh, very young age people believe that I would be like a visual artist of some kind or that I would become a visual artist of, of some kind. And then okay. once I made it to the university, I made a 180 and I was going full power into music and literally like, you know, 120% uh, per uh, devotion to that. Like uh, I worked a lot in the, in the first years and also became very successful very quickly because of that. Uh, what you what you studied? I mean, it's, um, it's my curiosity. What you studied at at university? I studied graphic and painting on art university. So, like, it's like in Germany, there is the state-run art universities are pretty prestigious and not easy to get onto. Like, there is usually yeah. many people who want to go there, and only few people that can get taken. 
and also normally you need to have finished your school, finished your school. which I didn't. Like I had, I didn't had my school finished. So the only way that they could take me was uh, for extraordinary oh, talent. So I had to be specially good, basically, and specially yeah. convincing. Yeah. Um, but I made that. I, I made that in in one year, devoted preparation. I I managed that, and then once I managed it, I dropped it also, <laughs> which was a good decision, you know, like that yeah. led me led me to a life of like traveling in between twenty and thirty. So that's a good thing, I think. So this was the inception, and then yeah, it, it all was actually getting along rather quickly after a couple of years i was starting to play on big parties uh first locally i started to play very very quickly locally because i was quite integrated into the local community like people knew me as a as a poi artist um before that around there in south germany and even in like in other places in, in austria and, and other places and i was very active already before i did uh made music and i knew the people around there so I was immediately starting to play in the local scene and then from the local scene going to like a little bit bigger festivals like um, Cannibal Massacre was the biggest and only festival actually back in the day in, yeah. in southern Germany. Um, you, yeah. you start to you start to you start to playing your own music directly or you start to doing DJ set and oh, also so, yeah, you start there, producing there was a very short time. Yeah, I played, of course, I played DJ sets, but I never had real fascination. So I, I, I played my first DJ sets in front of crowd in a club in Munich, which is called uh, Natrosh Temple. So I literally, I learned on stage, like literally to play with players and so forth, um, probably doing tons of mistakes, but the setting was like, okay, no problem, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but I never had the fascination for... Um, for DJing as I have for the creation. So like, I believe I'm a creator and DJing is a lot of fun, but I, I didn't have that initial, you know, like, wow, that's amazing. I want to learn that to perfection because I thought it's like very limited. And um, yep. I was immediately making the plan really like, because I think it starts in your head, right? You start with a vision about something before you do something. Yeah. So for me, it started when I was a 16 year old boy, you know, creating my own melodies in my head and thinking about being a music producer, like having that vision long before it actually happened. Basically, I, I think like I made a plan, like, or not a plan, but a wish or however you want to say. Okay. Yeah. And you, and you start to play, you start to play directly high tech or maybe? No, 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 high tech didn't really exist at that time. As a name, because I, because I, I uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but it's not true that you and other people like um, Cosmo and this kind of people, you are the people that have invent, higher, invented. Invented. I wouldn't claim that I invented. Or invent, to be honest, so I don't know about the invention. Like I was, like I would, I would say I'm one of the contributors, especially during the high times of high tech. So like uh, when really the word was becoming a thing. Then in this time, yeah. I, I think I was a major contributor. Um, that definitely, you know, also shaped as hundreds of other artists, or not hundreds, but loads of other artists, loads of other AAA high tech yeah. artists. Help to shape it all. Yeah. Everybody is trying to give something, you know. Everybody is proclaiming something, like you know. Okay, I am this. I am that. I am this. Yeah. And it's like also it's like a research, ongoing research basically. Um, at least I am trying to still you know like evolve or try to find new things how to mix it up or, you know, my spectrum is also very wide. But to come back to your question, actually yeah. back in the day, the word high tech was not yet. Not very established it was called actually maybe dark and at yeah. in 2008 the music maybe existed because there was already releases that are kind of like the classic high tech very different from nowadays high tech i believe if you listen to the first high tech releases like you know as you said from cosmo or from heiko um and then there was like you know different labels also contributing like uh how is it called dark prisma there was a cd i think called blueprints but that was way later there is a time before the total you know 
hatching of the egg that is high tech. And that was like the time, let's say 2005 to 2010. And then 2010 yeah. is when it actually started to seriously crystallize as a own style and uh, as a as a serious subgenre as well, I would say, in the in the side trends field. And then up to 2013, 2014, then it was really, you know, becoming more established. Then I think there was like a little bit of questionable time where nobody knew exactly where it was going. And then a lot yeah, of things yeah. happened. Like there was, uh, there is this super influx of highly commercial sound. And there's also like, you know, different combinations of things. But yeah, back in the day, high tech didn't exist. And to return uh, ultimately back to your question, it was like, um, I think I started 147. My first tracks were 147. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Then I worked myself up to 150. And then I made a lot of 150 tracks, like a lot, because I don't know, I, back in the day, it was just easier to play for me, like all of them in the same BPM. And for a long time, I just did 150 tracks. Then, but like 150, not sorry, but 150 track, but with kind of sound like more, uh, more dark, more, more dark, more I high tech guess. sounds. But yeah, slower, like or... high tech influences both both depends on the track there were some darker tracks as now as now as you as now there is the same thing you will find some darker tracks from me that are not so reliant on melodies and then also there are some that are a little bit more reliant on, on melodies but not as today way reduced in terms of melodic content for example like way way reduced yeah um yeah, it would be interesting to pull out some of those old tracks, but there's like in an archive and I would have to, to look them up. But it's interesting. There is tons of stuff which people don't know because the stuff is mostly unreleased. Um, but I played that and people liked it as well, but it was like very slow and technically not bad. Actually, my early stuff, if you go back 10 years, it's like it's not horrible. Yeah. Mostly it's like, yeah. yeah, it's there is a quality difference, but um, yeah, sure. But actually, some of the work that I did early on wasn't wasn't too bad qualitatively, and you can still listen to it, I think. Yeah, no, I yeah, didn't I... start with high tech directly, of course, and I still not. I'm not only a high tech artist. I don't really feel like that. I always my aim was to write psychedelic music. In the end, I was getting into that niche, and I like intense music. I am really a big fan of any kind of intense music, but that can mean a lot of things. There's chill out that is intense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do you mean about in intense? About well, intense so... that's really emotional or no? Really, really it can be of... in many, 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 many different ways. So either emotionally very intense that it's very gripping and um, you know very intelligent and intellectual, or also very deconstructive, dark. You know, like I like like to listen to quite extreme music of any sort. Like can be very fast, can be very dark, can be very deconstructive. But uh, the level of fidelity that is required for me to like it, you know, it should be high quality. Like there is stuff yeah. which, you know, people call psychor. And then there is some really good stuff that is in that realm that is very experimental and very fast. Uh, but we've made from really, really good producers. And um, then it kind of gets, it, you know, it has sense. But there's also stuff which is pretty basic and then I don't enjoy it so much. Yeah. I can totally understand you absolutely. Also about about or maybe I about psycho it's not really my fucking kind of music. Does yeah, first really... of all it's like nobody it's it's a very yeah. undefined genre. Psycho can mean a lot of things. <laughs> you know, like people call all kinds of things psycho. Some of it I like, some of it I don't like. So for example, Oroboro, I listen to some tracks like here and there and I like that. It's like it sounds quite good and quite intelligent. And there is some sense, but then, yeah. In the end, I'm a music producer that is in, very open to all kinds of genres, more now than uh, than ever before. Huh. Yeah, not only high tech. I'm working on another yeah. project now. You yeah, know? well, which kind of project? Where... So this is like, it's dark side trends, basically. Going a little bit back to the roots, I have not uploaded the newest tracks but in india i worked with uh 
pretty cool group of people which is called DMT music it's called Dendro Music Tribe yeah. and uh, yeah. it's basically 145 to 160 uh, kind of dark music they worked mm -hmm. with a lot of the Greek people like for example they had a release with Paul Karma and I'm planning not only my debut album for my project 13 Monkeys with them but also we are working on one CD that is uh, with Groak, one Brazilian artist, and yeah. uh, Psych Noise, one of the people from DMT Records, which is also quite a good producer, and myself, and like kind of like a versus VA, where there's like uh, basically two tracks from yeah. each and three collaborat collaborative tracks. Nice. So I'm working on that, and we wrote some really, really good tracks. So I did that a couple of years ago. But I'm not too happy with the first stuff that I wrote for the project because it was very lackluster. Like I just like, you know, put it out very fast, didn't put so much like detailed work inside it. But now when I'm working on the project, I'm giving it the same attention as I would give um, Parandroid tracks. And the new yeah. stuff is coming out quite nice. I showed it to some people, like for example, yeah, some, you know, labels and stuff that I know, like Fractal Nebula Mafia, uh, Fractal Nebula Crew. Uh, from Berlin and this guy really knows his shit and he said also wow man this shit is good so there is some good tracks in the oven for this project as well um which is way slower and more dark actually okay mm -hmm. nice yeah and now you do you remember more or less how many tracks you released or maybe you 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 you've done Oh my how god, many how tracks many tracks I've there? done. It's like, in, unfortunately, I was very not good in releasing my stuff um, in the last years. But I released this one double album with Blackout Records and, you know, a track here and there with, uh, with Blackout Records and some other labels. But in the last years, I was very, you know, very much sit sitting on my productions. Now I am, like, working on a new Parandroid album, which is really getting to its closure um i'm also i put a lot of music recently on soundcloud yeah yeah just um right now i was working on that um track that is inspired or based on uh blood sugar by pendulum um yeah. which is yeah, like a 175 track, actually. I don't know what I will do with that. You sent, you sent me something. Yeah. To here. Let's go listen. So, yeah. but where? On my WhatsApp? Um, I uh, sent it to I, you here in the chat, actually. But I can ah, see. Okay. Sorry, but I can, I can see it. Yeah, I just... Wait, I, I WhatsApp it you, to you. Uh, if you can send it to me here. It's, okay. Okay, wait a second. I don't want to show to all the people my fucking chat on WhatsApp. <laughs> oh, it is. <coughs> so let's go listen. Oh, this is a track from the video. Yes, bro. That you post. It's not finished. <laughs> Thank you. 
Anyway, I think that this kind of music needs sometimes this kind of melody to be remembered from the people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's good, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you, I, I explain you what I think. Um, uh, every time when I do something, uh, maybe for my op opinion, I do uh, I using vocals with memes and stuff, you know, so the people can remind. Yeah, the track. it's a very powerful tool, actually. I'm not really using that, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Like whenever you would use something like a track that everybody know or or a sample that everybody knows that everybody can connect to, crowds react normally very strongly to that. Yeah. And is and I think that sometimes need uh, maybe also a little bit of melody or maybe yeah. uh, some melody that the people can singing, you know, to yes. remind the, the track. Yes, yes, this sure. is the this is the fucking main thing that can the people can remember the track. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that is that, true. That people melody. Re remember that. That's how I love LSD works as well. It's a track that people can sing, actually. Like they can sing yeah. the melody. Yeah. And that's why it became yeah, so sure. successful, I believe. It's like it's, it's true. Yeah, true. absolutely. In, the, in some side trends, like, you know, like the classic way of writing music gets almost completely neglected. Like in some styles, music theory becomes totally, you know, unimportant, for example. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, because it's just neglected most for the most of the part. Like, you know, it's not what the music is about. And that can be also super interesting. But I also like real music, you know, I, I really like it. I also like, you know gathered some knowledge about that so then you want to yeah, use it's it. not that yeah it's not that uh that it's not that i'm working about uh for uh to make the people remember my tracks but you know it's good sometimes that making a track that okay the people can say okay this is the track you know yeah. this is uh because it's like the people can uh lost the thing about the tracks you know like uh yeah you listen a, a live set maybe you are at the dance floor listening a live set but you can't understand which one is the track that you played you know yeah it's it's like the pop like a, a pop kind of track you know the people i don't know michael jackson or these kind of stuff you know the people can remember this track also after yeah. fucking decade yeah. of yeah, oh, yeah. years for know? sure and sometimes I think it's good also to put something like that that the people can remember about the, the tracks. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. In this case, like I was like taking this melody um, from from Blood Sugar, but then like working myself so far off this melody and you know going to all kinds of places from this melody, and in the end it has nothing to do anymore with the track Blood Sugar. It's almost. It's actually question, questionable if I would have to even give realities if I would release the track, um, because it's all my own recordings and it's so far deconstructed that it's arguably a new track because there's new intonations, a, a ton of new intonations there that are not in the or yeah. original. <laughs> but um, first, I was like thinking, okay, I'm just taking that little snippet. It's just like a little. It was just like a little bit of MIDI. And then working myself off that little little MIDI, it's G minor. So like, you know, any yeah. kind of minor scale, I, I, I know in and out. Uh, so I can go anywhere when I'm on the note sheet there very easily. Okay. And it's interesting to, you know, if you understand harmonies, so like when melodies, when two melodies are intertwining and creating harmonies, it becomes very easy to ju jungle, juggle up melodies and it still sounds quite good in the end, no matter what you do. Um, it stays harmonic if you, if you keep in your scale. Yeah, absolutely. And who is, the, who is the, the person or maybe what is the things that inspire you? Or maybe in the beginning of your career, what oh. was, who was the your inspiration about who was my inspiration music. so to be very frank in the beginning like i think like that all my journey as a sidetrance listener and dancer and enjoyer is important so uh, as a 16 year old i was listening mostly to gms um then also like we we're like you know we we're all discovering my friends and myself like what was there at the time and there was a lot of israeli 
you know, melodic full on. And some of that was even good. Um, and then we were working ourselves to a little bit more twisted stuff, which was South African stuff like Frozen Ghost. And oh man, it's hard to remember all those names, but. Um, um, what was the question again? What Sorry. was the question again? So uh, about your inspiration. About yeah, inspiration. What, uh... Then, oops. Um, then I was inspired heavily by Tchaikovsky and, and actually, yeah, Tchaikovsky a lot. Then at a later time, I got heavily inspired by a uh, crazy astronaut as well, for sure. He did some substantial work without a question. Mm, then also early on, it depends at what time. I was inspired by so many different artists at so many different times. You know, like in 2012, for example, there was one track from um, from Arsec, which I really liked, which was called Trans Tornado. I was listening to that mm -hmm. a lot at that time. There have been uh -huh. tracks from GMS. As I said, GMS, I was listening as a youngster. Also quite inspiring because it was actually damn good music. Very, very good stylistic ideas. Um, like there's this track, for example, this We Got a Winner, where they use the melody of Rick Wim for a dream. You know that track? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't, wait a second. I, I'm, I'm not remembering what is the Requiem for a Dream. Fuck. Well, Requiem for a Dream is is the saddest movie in 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 history, basically. And yeah. Wait a second. It's a movie. I think from two thousand yeah. or something like that. Uh, let me let me put it quickly because I don't want to fucking have problem with um uh, with the uh... I said we got yeah copyright you mean He's in the middle of the melody well, no. I think it's all throughout, basically, parts of the melody. Yeah, I listen to stuff like that. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> yeah 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 this is a fucking amazing track absolutely yeah it's called yeah. i think it's called juice and it's it's an absolute dance floor it was an absolute dance floor banger really <laughs> back in the day it was yeah. and there was a time when i was really young and i would have really enjoyed that track and i actually listened to that track live from gms if i'm not completely mistaken like very 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 long time ago on full moon festival in germany um, as a kid. Psycho... Yeah. Yeah. But Psycho, I want to ask you something about Psychoski. Uh, because I, I'm I don't listen a lot of music and I know I don't follow a lot of the stuff and shit because yeah. I'm an asshole and I don't have a lot of time, bro. Yeah. But he he's doing stuffs, he's still working on stuff yeah. or produ production and releases. This, I, to be honest with you, I'm also not like totally behind um, his release schedule or something like that. But okay, uh, there was okay. a time when I was listening to to him a lot. Um, there was one album from him, the Budiot, very early album from him, which is a masterpiece, like, you know, uncontested okay. until today, I would say. Um, okay. Nowadays, I think he played, I know that he played in Goa, uh, just when yeah. I was in Goa. Yeah, he played in UV bar. Okay, so I, I'm pretty sure. No, no, he, he should be still active. I, I'm pretty sure that he is. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a um, curious things. Yeah. And... yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that you have already collab. With a lot of people, absolutely. Of course. Uh, but there's some there's someone that maybe uh, you never collab with, 
and you desire to and you fucking yeah. want to collab with someone oh, that's a hard question let me think there would be like a couple of interesting actually you can throw me around with like many artists but particularly one of them hmm let me think about it what would be interesting or maybe i think also that you are in a fucking same level with all the big artists about high tech or not high tech producers yeah. so i think that we uh who is one of the not the best but one uh that was yeah that you have that you was really happy to co to collab with about the For result example, of the track yeah like okay. yatsi definitely there's like yatsi me we wrote a track in two, 2013 and that was so cool i remember somebody was i agreed to a versus track with some other artist and yeah. he sent me a project and it was impossible to work on that project because it was such a piece of shit. And then Yuri was sending me a project and I was like, bam, taking the project and basically, you know, very quickly, like first session already was very nice flow because you get yeah. something with a good idea that already like, you know, gives you an idea like, and it was properly worked. Yeah. So uh, in this case, I liked it. It was quite nice flow. Then versus tracks, I did one interesting track with Orestes, uh, which is oh, still yeah. unreleased, which is a, a good track, but it, it uh, it's not released yet. And it got written, I okay. think, six years ago <laughs> or something like that. That was quite interesting. But that was also the situation. We were like on playing after Universo Paralelo. We went to an island yeah. and, you know, we made a track on like a remote island and he had like speakers and s synthesizers, the virus. So that was an amazing experience, actually, to be on the other end of the world uh, after this big party, you know, like on some like really far away beach where there is nothing on this island, like no yeah. cars, you know, like only thing what is coming is basically boat or tractor. There is some connection with tractor <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, like really far away place. So that experience wa was actually nice then. Working with people, yeah, I wrote I wrote a lot of tracks with Dash from Zerafana. I uh, we yep. wrote actually like I think five tracks in total or something like that: a one sixty five, a one seventy, a one ninety two, uh, and I think one two more. And some of them are actually quite nice. Like we still need to do something with them. Most of them are also almost finished. Um, and that was nice. I, I, I prefer to work in a studio with other people, I guess. Yeah, both can be nice. Depends. I'm, I'm really interested to, to hear what's what happened with you and Dash Glitch together. Uh, <laughs> it's really strange. Well, I cannot play music from here, right? So otherwise I would. Oh, yeah. But I'm, I, I'm just thinking on uh, which kind of music is. Yeah. The so result of that, the you Dash know, tracks... because it's really strange. Like some of them, like the first one, for example, it sounds a lot like a Parrot Android track. Um, then the other oh. ones, uh, Dash, he was mostly, I was like the production part. So I was mostly at the door because I'm super, super quick with Cubase. And then yeah. like he was recording on Bitwig because he's using Bitwig. Yeah. So he was recording a lot of those like signature kind of Dash sounds. And I was like implementing I those sounds. Like implementing those and he didn't work as much on the production but then still like it's like you know very influenced through the sound design because you can hear okay this sound is yeah. is a classical dash sound it's not like a classical parandroid sound but it's yeah, sure. oftentimes like in a quite parandroid package in some cases yeah but okay. also the sound signature is very different because mm. it was made in his studio so like that gives it again its own kind of weird texture because it was made in a different place. Then I also figured out that I was like, really, I was writing some fantastic tracks in the most weird places in, in India with just like laptop speakers and headphones. And um, for a short time, I had like the very, very tiny Genelex. Uh, a friend mm -hmm. of mine was borrowing me those tiny Genelex. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I wrote the track on my SoundCloud, which is called 
ähm, DMT Experience. Ja. I wrote that on the small Genelex, for example, and then some of the new forest or dark music that I was writing, I was writing on like portable speakers and we had like a dual headphone setup with the other artist and yeah. we were just in our room, no studio, you know, like just very basic, two laptops and um, and the other producer, he was recording sounds and I was again mostly working on the production and um, the result is fantastic. The sound quality is fantastic, which is weird, you know? Like, you would think like, man, the stuff in the studio, you write should be better. But I realized also through this whole journey that fuck, all the stuff that I wrote here recently, always there's some body is missing. So always the highest mm -hmm. frequency portion in my tracks was missing. And I noticed that I always have to, when I'm playing, I kind of go like a couple of decibel on the, on the highs uh, because I hear okay. it's, it's not enough. Um, so yeah, now I realized, okay, because body is really, really important for high uh, Absolutely. Also, uh, when I was in South Africa, I do a couple of tracks, uh, like only my headphones and my laptop, you know, but exactly. yeah. I think that it means a lot where, where you are, you know, if you are in a place with someone. Or maybe maybe in yeah. the beginning the people the people need maybe some good speakers to hear the things but i think that you or me also with a laptop you you need just a, a spectrum analyzer to see what you're doing yeah or not even really know to what be to honest do. i mean i don't really need a spectrum analyzer i'm not using more, a spectrum analyzer that much because everything has now a spectrum analyzer and for me it's more about yeah. pro proportionality and you get so much feedback um from the yeah, door sure. Uh, and I know, I know the all the volumes, you know, like I could set them blind. Yeah, you sure. could literally, I swear to God, I would 100% surpass this producer challenge of producing a bit of music without any sound. Okay, that's super easy. I could write a piece of music with rhythmics, with intonation, with everything, with bass line, with kick, without even having a listen to it one time. And what would come out at the other end wouldn't be horrible, I, I believe. So if you're really that, you know, used to produce music, you can literally do it deaf, I believe. Like not for a prolonged period of time, but you know what you're doing. You know the levels, you know the propor yeah, portion sure. proportionality of, of things, you know where to EQ stuff, when to EQ yeah. stuff, when to compress stuff, etc. Get tons of visual feedback from the door about dynamics, about levels, about frequency. Every fucking channel has now a frequency... Um, spectrum analyzer you know i think yeah, in ableton sure. is probably the same but in cubase every channel every eq has it built in in the background yeah 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 so you don't that even need okay. external spectrum analyzers anymore um but no, i know I people that, are some people are using it a lot and can be good i guess no to be honest to be honest also me i doesn't work when i play when i producing i not never but, but really, I, I already know what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. So I'm doing a sound. I know that is in that that range. I don't need to go yeah. and see if it's okay, you know. You can you can hear it directly, absolutely. But I said about a spectrum analysis just just to have a kind of uh, reference, you know. Yeah, for but sure. The, the the things that I said that that I mean is that maybe in that uh, situation is better that the kind of vibes that you uh, are yeah. that are you feeling in a situation with with some people you know and yeah. as you said you was in fucking india with orestes and no 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 that was in brazil <laughs> that was in brazil i was I'm in brazil okay. yeah anyway, but yeah exactly uh, so uh, like it's very good to have this mindset of i can do music wherever you know just give me a headphone and sure. give me my laptop um and yeah, yeah. In, then i can go for it in my case um yeah what i would take with me next time probably if i would go for a longer trip is like my mechanical keyboard and okay and, yeah. and, and because it makes such a huge difference and uh, and a mouse uh, like some yeah. decent kind of mouse which this one actually is not the best mouse but and especially the fucking this this roll it doesn't work wheel yeah yeah the wheel yeah. doesn't work I had one friend here and he saw, saw, he saw, said like, man, you're crazy. How do you work? And I'm, just, I'm getting, I was getting used to it, you know. But yeah, a decent mouse, a decent keyboard. Give me a laptop. Give me some good headphones with a good output. 
you know, like some sound card, yeah. ideally. I was using in, yeah. in Asia, for example, the Z1 to produce music. I was using the Traktor Z1 because this is what I had with me and it has a 300 ohm headphone output. So like it has a very good headphone output. You can run multiple yeah. headphones on that one headphone output, usually because most of the headphones are not that high impedance. So um, yeah, those minimal setups can yield great creative results. You don't really need a studio. A studio can have the opposite effect, actually. It can be very refreshing. Yeah. And I would yeah. love to okay. be more open to just sit somewhere. I mean, there are those people who literally sit in trains and they work on music and stuff. No, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's, you need a studio maybe for just the last technical things, you know, for the details. Yeah. To exactly. Fix. No, for sure. I mean, but in the end, that's so much less important than a creative idea. Like a creative idea. If somebody has a great, brilliant idea, like the substance of the track is amazing yeah. and people respond to it. Uh, this track can be always brought to, you know, diamond kind of level shine, you know, like you just yeah, give it yeah. to the right people in this case. If the right, if the core idea is fantastic, then um, then that is what is really counting. And from that, you can always make it great. So this is really what is more important, although quality is also very important. But that comes after the idea, the secondary to the idea of a track, I believe. No, oh, yeah, totally agree, bro. Absolutely. Especially now, I mean, like in many cases, it's questionable how people are listening to the music anyway. Nobody's listening like we are listening. Most end consumers, they are listening on end consumer hardware. Some people have speakers, some t people have portable speakers, some people have small PC speakers, some people listen on their, fo on, their, on their TVs and so forth. You know, you never know how people actually are listening to your music in the end. Yeah, one of my one of my teachers when I when I was at school, like a uh, sound engineer school in Milan, there's one of my teachers that every time say to me that, you know, every time he say to to the to the classroom, he said every time, guys, we're working with fucking thousand euros technical things, and after the people will listen fucking MP3 yeah. music in a fucking TV. speakers <laughs> like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Shit, yeah, know? but this is the reality. Not all people, yeah. though. And then in the end, it always gets, you know, dance music ultimately is there to be danced on, like, and to be played on in a dance kind of situation. So, yeah. Yeah. That is, but people listen to it in all kinds of situations and all kinds of situations yeah. can become dance situations. You know, five people in a park with a speaker can become a dance situation potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Uh, I want to ask you a question that I, that I asked to mental projection the last time. Uh, can you tell us a crazy a crazy thing that happened when you was playing in a, your life set? I don't know. In Maybe my life that... set? During my life set? Oh my god, you said yeah, that. During your life set, I don't know. Or something oh, yeah, really yeah. strange that happened. <laughs> yeah, there is tons of that, I guess. The one time I was playing um, on a party oh, in oh, Mexico oh. and I arrived at the party. It was in DF in Distrito Federal. Which the parties in, in Mexico, the district, district of Federal, has some really good parties because there none of the cartels has the overpower, you know, like they don't control. It's the only place which yeah. they do, do not control. So yeah. the crowd there was pretty good and everything, but it was like you know a couple of hours from Mexico City, um, outside of Mexico okay. City. And in a very remote place, and I arrived there at the party, and there was quite a lot of people at the party, thousand, maybe thousand people. And yeah. um, I was super thirsty. So, like, I asked them, um, you, have, you have something to drink? And they only said they have only whiskey or <laughs> beer, I think. And then I said, uh, I said, okay, like, from this, I don't like beer, so, okay, whiskey. And I'm not, like, a big alcohol fan. So normally I don't drink. That means like I'm getting high very easily from alcohol. So then they bring yeah. me one jumbo cup of whiskey. And that was the only thing there to drink, you know, apparently only alcohol. 
And then I started to drink that and I was getting super, super, super mega high on the alcohol. And then th during my life set, there was coming <laughs> like a little guy uh, that was like really trippy and da -da 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 -da, and he was coming and asking me, hey, you want to smoke some DMT? And then <laughs> I did that. And uh, that was like a super, super weird moment because I was very drunk. And, uh, you know, then there was this track playing at the moment, which was Mozart, uh, Mozart's Requiem. So like a super, super crazy track that is with some <laughs> classic music inside of that. And this shit all got filmed, actually. Like, and it's like, the, it, I look really out there, like after basically a jumbo cup of whiskey and then some like hits of DMT. So that was a crazy story. Then one really crazy story. Okay, I give you one more. I give you one more that is less contentious. And that was Guatemala, I think 2014. It must have been, probably been. And that was during my Central America tour. So it was Costa Rica and then Guatemala. And that was in the highlands of Guatemala with Frantic Noise, Mubali, <laughs> myself and Dark Whisper. And okay. it was next to three uh, active volcanoes of which two of them were breaking out at the time when I was playing, or at the time of the party also was happening. Wow. And next to the dance floor, there was a street of lava uh, that was cold, like old from three years ago, when three years ago there was like, you know, volcano breakout. And you could like the chill on the on the cold lava, you know, mountains kind of, it's like a, yeah. it's like yeah. a, like a weird kind of, you know, frozen river kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And there is even a meme about that. Uh, but that's a true story. That is is absolutely true. Like, that really happened. And it was crazy because, like, you know, it's a very alien place. You you see all the stars and, and everything. And there, it was maybe like a 200 people party, but crazy. And um, yeah. that whole that. tour was very crazy. The whole uh, Central America <laughs> tour, Costa Rica, and then um, then this time. But it was also a tough time personally because I was breaking up with my girlfriend just at that time, like long, long relationship, yeah. and that was over okay. exactly in that time. So I had to swallow that. Also, it was like not an easy time for me. But yeah, but a, but an amazing uh, experience uh, for a gig for sure and legendary situation legendary kind of. Situation. Yeah, but also a little bit fucking scary, bro. That fucking volcano. Not volcano really, shit, because it was not, you know, coming into our direction. You can kind of gauge, you can kind of predict what the volcano is doing. And I, I don't know, it was not scary to anyone. Okay. Yeah. You say, what the fuck? It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There was you know many Norman, of those crazy what, what, parties. Like, for example, there was one party in Palenque in 2012, which was the return of the ancestors. So yeah. you know, uh, this party was called Popul Vuh. And mm -hmm. that was the first Popul Vuh event also. And the guy was convinced that it would be the end of the world. So his whole, you know, MO, his mode of operation was based on Okay, the world will end. It's the return of the ancestors. Nothing will be here. Let's blast. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was a crazy party in the middle of the jungle with a crazy lineup also. But uh, also a crazy premise. I mean, you know, like there is no tomorrow. Yeah. That was the premise. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? And I'm... Uh... So let's. I want to ask you also, um, where you was to play in the world? Which which kind of country you visit? To, the, where, which countries I visited? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Canada, America, Mexico, Guatemala, um, Costa Rica, Brazil, uh, France, Italy, Austria, Switzerland, uh, Czech Republic. Slovenia, Australia, Sri Lanka, um, India, Nepal, um, Portugal, of course. Why you played in Italy? Uh, a couple of years ago for one in Florence, actually. 
was like a New Year's Eve party. Lots of people. Okay, where was in uh, in the north? In the south, the in center. Florence, I don't know, like in Toscana. I'm in Florence, yeah, I'm in Toscany. In Toscany, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. It was quite nice actually uh, to see uh, Tuscany and everything. Like, it's such yeah. a nice place. It's like an open air museum. In Florence, it's like literally like that. Yeah. No, like the old city is like literally like a huge fucking open uh, air museum. I'm a, I'm Italian I'm Italian and to be honest I've never been in Tuscany uh since three years ago three or four years ago I've been in, in Tuscany for the first time and when I see the hills in Tuscany I say what the fuck it's so fucking amazing yeah. because it looks like a fucking paint you know yeah and that is like I, that, it, well we have this association because there were a lot of great painters also that were painting you know Italian Renaissance yeah. painters that were painting the yeah. Tuscany and um that very special kind of color that you are getting only in tuscany basically like this image how the yeah. color how the light is yeah. how the land yeah. reflects with the light and everything like that this yeah. foggy uh, f something f foggy there is a name for yeah that. yeah there is actually a painting technique that is named uh, yeah. after after this uh typical tuscany images actually from Leonardo da Vinci where it's like a little bit like foggy yeah and I do we really I, it was my first time I take like two days taking my car and going around the hills and every time stop my car and looking the fucking panorama because it's fucking amazing and, and I'm Italian you know yeah I see a lot of stuffs in Italy but yeah. Tuscany it's fucking cool yeah it is fucking cool and the it's city crazy. is also really beautiful and yeah of course um, Italian food <laughs> it's, it's really good like we know that we know that you're a fucking uh, lover about about italian food and I'm also fucking, see that like, you're I'm cooking a, i'm almost like an italian mama like i'm trying to be like a nonna italian nonna making fresh pasta making fresh pizza <laughs> making fresh um you know tomato tomato sauce. tomato sauce like completely fresh you know like fucking... la, passata di la passata di pomodoro yeah la passata di pomodoro <laughs> And proper, you know, like I blanche, I, I boil the tomato, I skin the tomato, I fucking like, I do it like properly, as properly as I can with the stuff that I have here. But the taste yeah. is so amazing. Yeah, I love Italian food. Huge fan of Italian food. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's that, one I of know the most sounds... famous food in the world in the end. Just like... I know that, you know, sorry, sorry. Yeah, just like in most places, it gets bastardized a lot, you know. Like pasta, for yeah. example. You know, yeah. in Asia, you only have two different kinds of pasta. Pasta white sauce, pasta red yeah. sauce. That can mean anything. It can mean anything. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Bro. But, but mostly honest, it doesn't I, mean not, anything good. Not because I'm Italian. Uh, or maybe also, yeah, about that. <laughs> but I love Italian food because... I don't know. I love, but I love because it's good. Hello, Jenna. Welcome here. Woo! How's it? Is Jenna is one uh, as a fucking amazing person from South Africa, from Johannesburg. Yeah, I know her like from Instagram. She's following me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because she's because she fucking love you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> love your fucking music, like fucking all your shit, my bro. Yes. <laughs> It's well, all good. Thanks. It's all good. How are you, my bro? And also, Jenna, I cooked something for Jenna when I was in Johannesburg. Some fucking pasta, baked pasta. You know what? What I mean, baked pasta. Shit like that, bro. Fuck. <laughs> nice. Yes. Not really my thing, bacon pasta, but I'm... not bacon, bro. Baked. Not ah, bake it al forno, basically. Like, are you crazy? You can put fucking bacon on the pasta. You want you want to be killed, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. But anyway, I, I don't. I like Italian food because uh, it's good because we take not a lot of things, yeah, but in the right way. So... Yes, exactly. It's very composed, and I hate random stuff. I really don't like random stuff. In Italian food is like the least random, exactly as you said. There is in some cases just five ingredients or even less, but it's so amazing. Yeah. I say that, I, every time I say that the one of fucking amazing pasta that I love 
is a pasta with garlic, spicy pepper, and oil. Yeah. I also like That's that, it. actually. I make that sometimes. Uh, Jen, if you want to ask something to Sam, you can ask every, everything you want. Uh, give me one second and then come back really in one second. And I want to ask you, bro. Yeah. You never been to you never been to South Africa. No, I never have been to South Africa, because actually, I think like the high tech community in South Africa is rather small. It's like it's yeah. there. There has been some, you know, things way in the past um, where a lot of European acts were down there, like Chico and Heiko and Cosmo Heiko. And, and so forth. Um, but I think it's very minuscule and I yeah, don't, bro. I'm not surprised that I never got invited to South Africa, but I yeah, would, but yeah. yeah, no, the people doesn't, or maybe not doesn't like, but they are really, because there's someone that play high tech. And also I had a couple of, uh, a couple of sets, like four hours of high tech, but four hours in a fucking festival of high tech. But the people doesn't like so much. I don't know. Yeah. There's someone that like it, but not a lot of people like yeah. that type of shit. Yes, exactly. And it's like not so established yeah. over there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's always, you know, if there is something that, that is already established, you know, the people don't want to give up that space to, to a new style that easily. So to bring some new music style to a new place is not an easy thing. You could see that with uh, the people in Australia, for example, where I was like the, yeah. the first headliner or one of the first headliners uh, for the Anti-Gravity yeah. Festival, which was the first yeah. like, serious kind of, you know, uh, festival that presented high tech and dark and forest mostly with a very good yeah. sound system and very good laser show and everything, you know, done very properly. But it was a huge effort to, you know, show that to like the regular people that listen to more slower stuff. But when they saw it, they were actually quite impressed. And they said like, ah, okay, wow, there is actually yeah. good fast music also. <laughs> Because they booked uh, like a good lineup. There was like good selection of forest artists like Jabo and uh, Faribi Jalebi. And a good selection of high tech artists like uh, Insect or myself and Brain Blaster, our project together, we played there. Um, so, yeah, not easy to present music. It has to be, you know, presented by a good team of people. And it's like, yeah, always a bit of chance, I guess, if something like that takes a foothold or not. But yeah. But I think that in the next two years or something similar, I think that those in South Africa, yeah. high tech will come. Yeah. Because so, they, I've, I, so, I hear something about high tech, to be honest. And someone, or maybe not the dance floor doesn't, it's not that the dancer doesn't like it, you know. There was a lot of people dancing and was happy about that. Because they think that in the night you need something more strong and more faster. Yeah. It's good. Yeah sometimes you know and i see and i see people appreciate that so i think that also in south africa in the next period or in the next years maybe will happen that maybe. So. maybe 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 i mean like in brazil for example there is a huge requirement now for high-tech artists um and has been since a couple of years and they i mean i played on universal parallelo there i played on maya festival there which is two of the biggest events in all of brazil I believe, and um, and they put me there on the on the main stage uh, as well. So there is big parties where you have kind of like, you know, very popular regular sidetrans artists, and then you have one high tech headliner. It's just one mostly, or two. Yeah. But there is a, re a re requirement for that even now on the big parties. Um, in Brazil, though, the whole situation is very different. There is Brazilian acts which are only playing in Brazil, which have huge following, and they can exist just in Brazil, for example. You know, 
Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, Jenna asks, how can we make people love high tech more and appreciate it? It well, was for be, me. Yeah. I can I can reply like, okay, doing a fucking flyer with like wrote like prog is cuck. Listen to fucking high tech and bring some fucking high tech artists and don't give a fuck about what the people want. Because I think it's a it's a fucking mission from the organizers also. Yeah. Bring yeah. people and changing about yeah. that thing. But, but it's yeah. also like to let's be, reply, need to be the right reply, act to, to get you know to introduce yeah. people into shit. I believe as well. You know, like bring somebody that really is, you know, able to make people respond from different um genres yeah. so that they still can like it. So maybe not the most experimental and crazy stuff but something that people can connect to nevertheless i mean there is acts where people can connect to even if they're not necessarily into high-tech music uh not many but there is some so maybe book some somebody like that present it in a very very good way present it among other really really good artists um that are from a more demanded style this is like how it's working in brazil you know like maybe from those 15,000 people that are on the dance floor, maybe only 5,000 really love it, but in the end, 10,000 will dance to it. And mm, a lot of people might to get to know it there because they are just like, you know. Hello, motherfucker. Thanks for the follow. They're used Please. to to it. Um, Thanks more. for the follow. Um, but do you think that maybe one of the festival in the biggest festival in South Africa, like Origins, or I don't remember the other name of one, I think that if they bring some high tech artists, yeah, the people I think that can enjoy the things. So, yeah, well, there is a way to 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 present high tech, as I said, like put it in a good, yeah. good collection of other artists. Like can, can be a div more div diverse party. Like anti gravity did it. It was you know dark and forest and high tech. So yeah, then you get a wider range, maybe or even like yeah. In Portugal, it's also very normal to have those commercial events, and they will put one high tech artist, and that's it. And then like it is like literally like you know after I finish playing, the next guy. It's, I remember it was even one time it was higher end. I think he is a South African guy. And yeah. yeah, he had to play after me and starts with 145. And what do you think about high tech at the moment? Who he is? Uh, tell me three of the best high tech artists, or maybe also not also uh, oh, not only high tech, not but only high tech. Tell me what are yeah. your three three of your best artists at the moment that you think? Pyrokine, I believe. Um, yeah. Pyrokine and Void Realm. Me. me. Obviously me. Yes. Obviously. Are you a high tech artist? <laughs> no. No, but some, no, but someone brought to me like uh, brought my name and brought high tech. What the fuck? I don't do high tech. Yeah, no. well, people, no, it people about... see it as they want to see it. Um, Pyrokine, no, so Void sorry, Realm. But... Who else is good? Oh my god, really, really hard. Re I'm really bad at this. Yeah, let's say Void Realm and Pyrocoin. Both of them very promising new artists from India. Um, that are really, really good. Like, you know, well trained. Okay. Would you ever play in SA? For sure, I would play in SA. So, Bro, we have to do a pack. We have to sell a pack. Me and you fucking going to South Africa yes. is fucking weird, bro. For yes. sure. Yes. Yeah, I would, yes, love to, I would definitely love to visit South Africa um, to see it because it's, it's one of the places that I haven't seen yet. One, one of the many places, me. but yeah. You can come with me, bro. I'm a fucking legend. OG of, yeah, OG. of I'm a fucking legend in Johannesburg, bro. <laughs> yes. So you're always no, hanging no. around in Joburg, yeah? Yeah, I was in Joburg for most of the time. I was like 10 days in... in uh, uh in uh in, in fucking cape town just just 10 days but i don't know johannesburg is really fucking is really different because it, there's there's not a lot of 
not good place, but there's no like panorama and stuff like in Cape Town, yeah. of, for sure. But it's good because it's a fucking wild city, bro. There are a lot of parties, the people is fucking crazy. It's yeah. so good. I don't know, bro. But yeah, yeah you well, definitely I have to go see it with my own eyes, I guess. To, Africa, to, to see it, to understand it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, bro. Well, maybe we can talk about that. We, I can speak with someone, and we can talking about something to go there, because for I sure. want to come. I want to be there for sure in this win in this winter. Um, I think that I have to go maybe in January to have a gig. I don't know, but I'm, I'm still talking about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, fuck. You, you, you know what? You have to meet the people from South Africa because it's really fucking lovely and friendly and it's really crazy people yeah really fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah i mean they have, they have a lot of sunshine there so mm. in australia also the people are very nice and the mentality is more sunny because the place is more sunny than germany for example i think so people are just generally a little bit more open and more, more yeah sunny. sure and there's a lot of really fucking crazy people, bro. Yes. Really, at the party. But it's so fucking amazing because the people, as I told you, the people are really friendly and lovely. Yeah, when I was arrived for the first time, all the people would say, treat me like a fucking... Um, not like a king, but, you know, but like a fucking... Yeah. Really hospitality. A lot yeah. of hospitality, bro. Nice. So, uh, I want to ask you a technical question. Analog or digital, bro? Analog or digital? Hardware. I love hardware, but we live in a day and age where we have insane capabilities in the digital realm. And even if you would go to an insane modular studio, uh, most of the modules are digital. It's like you don't think that you see a module and then it's an, an, uh, an analog module. It's most yeah. likely based on digital um, sound generation. And um, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Like, of course, it's amazing if you have like something for mastering, for example, can be amazing to have, you know, a Mendeley EQ for 5,000 euros or something. If you are yeah. one of those lucky ones that can afford something like that of course it, those things have amazing sound and uh, no question about that but we live in 2022 the market is saturated with absolutely next level tools for music producers yeah. like never before waves is just absolutely killing it fab filters absolutely killing it in terms of design and innovation and um i am in the digital realm and if you read I was reading one very interesting book about mastering where the most legendary mastering engineers in the world are talking exactly about this question, uh, digital or analog. And those people okay. 10 years ago would have said that, you know, like they, they need their hardware and so forth. And nowadays, the most legendary mastering engineers hardly go out of the box, means they stay in the digital realm because there is so much capability there and also DSP uh stuff like uad and so forth um which is also digital of course you know um there is no need for analog hardware but it's nice to have uh, it's also i have the neutron in the studio for example but unfortunately at the moment it's not working because there's some issue with the ac but i have An that intro yeah neutron okay i have i have it too yeah. yeah, because it's like a super cheap way to get uh, analog oh. noise, analog oscillator, analog, you know, VCF, v VCO, etc. And have CV capability, although I don't have any modular modular things here, so I don't really benefit from that. Uh, but it's a nice to have kind of thing. Like, it's good to have um, anything in hardware, but not necessary today. We have insane tools, absolutely insane. So, for example, Fab Filter, as I said, Fab Filter Pro QR, um, this reverb is, is, is insane. Like, you know, it's, I think it probably beats a lot of hardware reverbs just because of the innovative interface and so forth. So, hardware, very important for me personally. I really love to 
have used my hands, play a synthesizer with my hand and modulate it with yeah. my hand. And yeah. even if I would work in the digital realm, I would still use a MIDI controller to, you know, tweak stuff with my hands. Uh, so hardware is utterly important to me personally as a producer, but um, then digital versus analog. We live in a day and age where the best stuff is getting produced inside the box and with mostly digital synthesizers as well, virtual analogs like the Nord, like the Virus, like many other. This is all not analog gear. This is all digital gear. This is all yeah. produced by a DSP. So it's like a sophisticated system where you have a specialized kind of CPU that is only there for sound generation, just like in UAD. But it's still, you're completely in the digital realm. It's like, it's a digital synthesizer that is attempting to sound analog, which it does very successfully. But maybe you don't think that, but because uh, Nibra asked, uh, no, not ask, but he says, so true, Mr. Brandroid, the market has changed quite a bit. Software got so good, but nothing beat analog. Nah, but, it's like, but really, you know it's, what, it's, it's, it's a lot about the person behind the thing. Uh, I believe, really, like, if you know what you're doing in the dig digital realm, it's so much about skill, let's say mastering. It's like, I think that the more skillful engineer will, will, will win in a challenge like that. Like somebody with the most state-of-the-art hardware uh, in the world access to that and somebody that has state-of-the-world access to digital components um, but knows better and is the more trained, better uh, engineer, then he will win. I think the benefit from, from analog stuff is, is minuscule in 2022. It's a nice to have. It's a very nice to have. Mm. But not a necessity. Because I, was, because I was thinking about the things, you know. Maybe in the beginning there was this kind of machine or analog stuff, like also synthesizers and stuff, you know. Like, I know that virus is not is not analog, but it's digital. You know, there's analog interface and stuff. Okay, but what what I was to, what I what I want to say is like maybe in 2022 the technologies and digital technologies are really fucking um, powerful. You know, yeah. you know, and maybe yeah. you can do really different crazy things with digital things. Yes, maybe more yeah. than analog things. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah, so you know for example, mean, like yeah. if you take a MOOC synthesizer, which many people aspire to own or own, you will have a severely limited output. There is no proper modulation. There is no recursive modulation. There is like a fixed envelope. It's, it's, it's way less capable than any dig digital synthesizer. It, the only thing where it has something is like the sound generation. So it gets generated with electricity and has like a, a VCO instead of yeah. a digital oscillator, which still is, is kind of like limiting in a day and age where we have grain, where we have wavetable, where wavetable is utterly important, for example. And um, yeah. additive synthes synthesis, not only subtractive synthesis. You know, like both of the realms are interesting, especially if you work with both of them. So I had the MS-10, for example, the legendary MS-10 for some time because some random dude was bringing it to my studio and I was just about to go to a tour and I told the guy, I'm not going to want to take responsibility for this thing. Uh, I don't want you to put it here. And he nevertheless, he <laughs> put it there. And then it was in my studio for many years. And I did a little bit uh, stuff with that where I was taking the signal from the MS-10 and putting it into the virus and working with the analog signal with all the digital yeah. possibilities. And this is really where the most juice is coming from actually is like you know using uh raw analog sounds and working with yeah. them digitally yeah for me yes, also I, I have to say that sample work is very important to me as well like i i really really i'm a big believer in working with samples as well so samples are many times also fully analog or completely you know like actual nature yeah. sound, like in in, in many yeah. cases, like literally recorded yeah. sounds. Um, so this is a very important thing to my project specifically. And I think that, you know, somebody who really can work with samples, he has a huge, you know, benefit to complexity and variety in his music in some cases. 
but it depends how you want your project to sound. So for me, it's yeah. amazing to work with analog sources and, you know, net, net natural recordings and field recordings and so forth, as well as my own synth sounds and so forth. And yeah. Yeah, I think I think the same. And also, I remember one of I saw some years ago um, a masterclass from Tristan, and I remember these particular things from him that he said uh, about percussion. And I don't I don't remember what he said, what, what he was talking about. Uh, but anyway, he said about to using sometimes uh, analog or real sounds and after that maybe sampling and using and changing and modifying it uh, but to bring like a some reality real things you know that doesn't yeah. come from yes because it's good using digital things but when you use something that come from reality or maybe some real sounds you know yeah i know that also a real sound is not a real sound because it's processed by the microphone and stops no but, anyway, but it is a, there is a difference field between field, field recordings and real yeah. recordings and synthesized sound i mean you can sure. record a wave crushing in the ocean or you yeah. can synthesize a wave crushing with a yeah. synthesizer yeah. and it's two different things because like you know Absolutely. real recorded sound sounds is infinitely fine in its construction way more fine than usually its synthesized counterpart like you can synthesize anything you can synthesize a cello quite easily or a string quite easily but it has not yeah. even you know it usually doesn't have the complexity and 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 etherical fineness of yeah, sure. a real cello for example that is recorded in an yeah. orchestra or something absolutely um How will you see yourself, bro, in the next five years? In the next five years, I, I really hope that I can get my shit together in terms of releasing my music. I want to start with that right now. I think I'm going to upload a couple of tracks to Bandcamp also in the next days, but um, get my release schedule together, work very diligently and work with the right people for bookings and management as well. So like I never had management. Uh, but I'm considering now to get professional management and I have some good offers from some really, you know, good agencies. So I'm considering to, you know, invest myself into debt or let let myself being managed in a more professional way and hopefully, you know, can stabilize or have a good good schedule like that and be a little bit more organized in terms of getting my music out to the people. So I'm th considering oh, yeah. to do a lot more self-releases. And hopefully, yeah, I can like establish my my other project that I'm working on right now, which is a bit a bit slower. And that's it. I'm I'm just gonna continue working on music and and try to establish myself, but organize and manage myself better, or let myself being being managed better. Okay, and I want to ask you. Uh, you, I, I'm sure that you played in not maybe all but in a lot of biggest festival or maybe in, in a, a lot of, of them, not in, in all like in a handful of them for sure yes no yeah i want to the, the, the question is you played in a lot of good gigs play around the world in yeah. a lot of countries but there are some places that you still now want to play there i don't know maybe there's a festival that you say fuck i want to play there i, I don't know you never play at master of puppets maybe no, i don't no, know i did play at master of puppets you play there, yeah, okay. I think that maybe maybe for you was uh, was one of the goal of your no, not career. No. no, no, I no? helped I helped Florian to to establish Master of Puppets. I was one of the first acts playing for him because we know each other for a very okay. long time. But then we had a ah, fallout, okay. uh, I think in two thousand seventeen, where we completely broke up any communication. But before that, we were okay. actually we know each other since we are like fourteen. And I was playing on Master of Pup Puppets parties when there was 50 people and it was like, you know, like uh, on okay. a farm outside of Vienna. And then I was like yeah. the headliner for the first Master of Puppets parties in Vienna um, that were mostly, you know, full. Like, um, and I played there many times, a couple of times, b bringing up the yeah. brand, helping him like as good as I can with like information about how to book people and so forth. And I played on the first Masters of Puppets festivals until I think 2017. 
So that was not okay, an inspiration. So and also, oh, okay. yeah. Um, but then, like, I mean, a lot of milestones I already reached in that regard. For example, Universo Paralelo I played already, which is, I guess, an honor right. to get invited to, to there. Yeah. Um, and then... Like where I would want to play, I played at Atmon long, long ago, for example, before it was as big as it is right now. Um, okay. I don't know if it's going to happen, actually, with all the situation now in Sri Lanka. Right now, there is like, you know, basically almost like a like co complete, you know, apocalypse at the moment in this country. But yeah, that's a good really? festival. <sighs> what is the biggest festival? Boom Festival, I would like like to play for sure. Yeah. But then they have a very, very, very unwelcoming policy towards high-tech artists, I feel. And a very, very, you know, stuck mindset. Because you see that the other events, uh, the other big events, like Universal Parallelo, already, you know, changed their mindset in that regard a long time ago. Um, that, okay, we are now at this time in, in psychedelic history, and there is a serious it's a style that has to be taken serious because there is demand for it and people like it so we have to present it but boom festival is not following that although ozora is following that ozora is another yeah. one of the big ones that i would like to play that i didn't play it um but there it's like it's very important that you have the right connections so like they book the people that are you know connected to the people that do the booking and uh, yeah. if you're yeah. not in that in that you know circle then the chances are very yeah. minuscule like with the and Universal you know, Parallelo, it was because of that. It's a big honor, you know, when uh, on the organization like yeah. that from themselves approach you That's and invite you. you Fuck, amazing! And you never played to to sci-fi also? Sci-fi also, I didn't play. No, okay. I didn't. Uh, the thing is that I many times in my career I was actually like earning enough money with only the bookings that I got requested to play, but. That yeah. was a different time than now with the market that was very, very different than now. And yeah. I think now you need serious management, actually, um, to achieve the same amount of bookings that I had during those times. But I was used to not get in touch with people, which is not a good thing, you know, and I'm still yeah. like that. That's why I'm considering getting management that then hopefully takes that part of my shoulders and do, do the communication with all the organizations. Yeah. Um, because that's a very important part, super important part. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And if you're bad in that, as I am, then that can be detrimental to your project. So you have to play, of course. Yeah, this is the reason why sometimes I see I see some uh, not the same artists, but I can't see in the lineup some good artists that they think that they. Um, they have to play there, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of good artists that sometimes I never see in the in yeah. sub lineups. But... Yeah, because it's like either you're in the circus or you are not. It's a lot of kind of, um, you know, bro business, you can say, uh, also. Like, and a lot of political stuff as well is just a part of our culture right now. Um, so people are getting booked if there is like if, if it's beneficial in some way, and also the market has changed through social media. Of course, it's less merit based, and more about getting attention. So like as long as you manage to get enough attention, uh, it's more about that. It's not even that much about writing amazing music. If you yeah. have fantastic communication and PR, then you're pretty much safe. So like today as a musician, you know it's like it's sad but you have to like focus a lot on those things or have somebody focus for you it's one of the two things either you do it yourself and you're capable or somebody else has to take care of it if there is no communication it's really hard you know now it's yeah. a lot about social media ah how many followers do you have um ah yeah yeah it's a lot about that a lot about Absolutely. spotify so plays and stuff like that so like you have to be good in all those disciplines have to take care of your spot. We have, have to take care of that. Yeah. To take care of that. Yeah. And this is, I want to say to you that uh, we was organ we was start to think to organize our festival. Our because we start to organizing parties and stuff with me and my crew, <coughs> and we had think 
to organize a festival, 24 hour festival in September. Nice. And my crew and another crew and we was looking for some uh, international artists and they say there was a guy is come from scotland he's called uh, chronix that i think it's an amazing producer and really good artist you know but he don't have a lot of followers on instagram so i say that to the other crew and they say to me ah yeah but it's not so good it's not so famous and i say no it's not that it's not so famous because if you know uh the scene you can understand that he's he he is a really good artist and a really good producer that fucking blast every time he yeah, plays so then it's like a lot of, looking, it's a lot about the you guys presenting him very well you know like communicating him very well like okay oh, maybe yeah, you don't sure. know that guy but you should and like it's an amazing artist so like then it's uh, for the promoter and it is good to support artists like that if you really see wow this guy you know has not so much following yet but really good music yeah yeah but on the other hand there is this like you know business kind of thought uh, that like ah, okay uh to be honest with you i think the right way to proceed in this case is to book him but to have him supported by somebody with a lot more following you know if you yeah, sure. yeah you need to like sure. you can bring newcomer artists or artists with less following but that, then help them out and give them a good more famous counterpart on the lineup that they are playing next to maybe or something like that <coughs> okay jenna uh, but fucking drive safe in the fucking johannesburg traffic without traffic like about fucking load shedding bitch mm. <laughs> thanks for joining so, jenna hopefully see you at some point yeah yeah always you drink oh yeah. you drink you fucking drive safe yeah <laughs> in the fucking jungle of traffic of um um you want to the last things maybe uh you want to speak about the project that you are working on in india about um about school production about school well i had to finally break up the project there because one of the guys that that was uh, that i was partnering up with he had a complete freak out and sent me death threats and murder threats um because oh. of nothing so then like i couldn't really really finish that but i'm still thinking about like doing the online shop and doing like online tutoring and so forth i have to see now how i proceed oh, with yeah. that project but yeah that like unfortunately as many things in india they don't work out as they w were planned originally so that was unfortunately not happening and also the crazy thing is that i told you about oh. it i think that in the place where i stayed in india in the end it was completely flooded and ripped away the place doesn't exist anymore the village where i was Shit. is there was like a catastrophe um and the place is not existent anymore, actually. Um, but the DMT, the Dendro Music Studio still exists because it's so high up, um, I think, at least. But um, yeah. So I'm thinking about actually maybe opening a pa Patreon account soon again and like putting a lot of my learning material and sample libraries or stuff like that maybe there for like people as benefits. It's so good. Yeah. Absolutely. So fucking amazing. Yeah, and then I'm. Working... I do the same. I do. I open my Patreon, but... Mm -hmm. but I've not do a lot of things. I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's also it's quite good to know, keep it I have a lot really of simple. To it's good to keep it simple over the Patreon, in my experience. Um, yeah. You know, not prom over promise, but like yeah. keep it very simple. Like have one supporter tier, and then like maybe two advanced tiers or something like that, with benefits. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think I'm going to work on this in the, in the next days. I had already one. It was not that unsuccessful actually, but then at some point I was feeling frustrated and I closed it. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to reopen it and work on my album in the next time. Like this, this is the main focus for me, finish the parent right album because it's so close to, to getting finished actually. Um, and working on the new 13 monkey stuff simultaneously with the other artists and yeah 
as I said, trying to get my shit together, try to manage everything in a little bit better way. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> so I think we're done, guys. Was a fucking amazing chat. Thank you, also brother. Thank well, you for the invitation. You thank you. For, thanks a lot for thanks the invitation. To you, bro. Good to see you again, Was my bro. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Hope to see you maybe in the next time somewhere. Yeah, for I sure. Where. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe our our ways cross like last year. No, when was it last year? Yes, last year, no? In summer. Uh, no, it is in 20, 2020 at Drop Festival, bro. Was 2020, you sure? Yeah, it was 2020, bro. You're Trust sure? me. It was 2021, no? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. In 2021, it was the last year and it was... Uh, oh, fuck, maybe, yeah. Maybe it was you... last year, bro, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's 2021, yeah. <laughs> But yes. In 2020, there was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Okay. In Slovenia. Yeah. Thanks so much, bro, for the invitation. Thanks. Thanks, Gina, and thanks to all of you guys to be here. Yeah. Uh, thanks to you, Sam. And so, thank you so much, guys. See you in the next episode, and have an amazing night, guys. Yeah. See you guys. You. Peace out. You.